equations first, and then we will talk briefly about the inequality. So let's look at that very first example. Um, now this is kind of similar uh, to the square root functions, kind of, um, in that you need to completely isolate the absolute value expression before you start treating it um, uh, special case, so to speak. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But this very first example here, number one on your paper, the absolute value of negative 4 plus 8 is 4 to 60. The absolute value expression is isolated. There's nothing outside of the absolute value bars on that side of the equation. So then we can just go ahead and jump into treating this um, and solving it like we do absolute value equations. Now, absolute value equations have two solutions, and here's the reason why. Because if negative 4 plus 8n is equal to positive 60, then the absolute value of positive 60 is positive 60. But if negative 4 plus 8n were equal to negative 60, if whatever n was there caused that expression to be negative 60, then the absolute value of negative 60 is positive 60. That's why most of the time you have two solutions when it comes to the absolute value equations. So we are going to split this into two equations and we're going to drop the absolute value bars. We're going to set it equal to positive 60 and we're going to set it equal to negative 60. And we're going to solve each of them individually. Usually one of them is a whole number and usually the other solution ends up being a fraction. Um, not always, but usually. Okay, so for the first one, add 4 to both sides, divide by 8. 64 divided by 8 is 8. <coughs> On the other one, when we add 4 to both sides, 8n is equal to negative 56. Divide that by 8, and uh, that actually ends up being a whole number as well, negative 7. Sometimes we end up with two whole numbers. A lot of times we end up with a fraction. Okay? Um, it's an equation. You can check it, plug it back in. If you don't know where the absolute value bars are on your calculator, they aren't technically absolute value bars. It's under your math menu. You go over to num, standing for number. And it's the very first option. ABS stands for absolute value. And then you type in what you're trying to check. And close your parentheses to prove to yourself that it does equal 6. Okay. Um, something like number 4, negative 10, or the absolute value of negative 10 minus 2b is equal to 0. This is a case where we are only going to have one solution because 0 doesn't really have a negative, okay, 0 is neither negative nor positive, uh, it's just right there in the middle, um, <clears throat> so we actually don't have two solutions uh, for this equation. Now, you don't have to, uh, but I'm going to move the variable, since there's nothing technically on the right side, I'm going to move that to b just to make it positive. Because I don't like dealing with negative coefficients with my variables. <clears throat> but you should end up with negative 5 either way you approach solving that. It should not make a difference there. Um, and if you check it, negative 10 minus 2 times negative 5 ends up being negative 10 plus 10, which is 0. Okay? So most of the time you're going to have two solutions with your absolute value equations, but every once in a while you just end up with one. Alright, let's look at one like number 6 where we're going to have to do a little bit of work before we can just split it into the two equations. Okay, So like I said, this is kind of like our radical equations. Remember when we had the square roots, we had to completely isolate what was under the square root before we could square both sides. Same thing happens here. We're going to have to get the absolute value by itself before we can split it into two equations. Um, so you cannot, you can never change what's inside the absolute value bars. Okay, you can't just distribute that 3 to both those terms. Instead, since we're dividing by 3, we need to begin by multiplying both sides by 3. So we've got the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to negative 9. Is there a problem with that? 
Right. Absolute values can be negative. Probably if I ask that question, it's because there is an issue. Okay. <clears throat> um, absolute values cannot equal a negative number. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Miss Wendy, you just had us set that equal to a negative value. Yes, but I was not setting the absolute value equal to a negative number. I was setting what was inside the absolute value bars equal to a negative. When you take the absolute value of whatever 4x minus 1 is, it's going to give you a positive answer. There's no way it's going to equal negative 9. So this is no solution. Okay? Now, you can certainly solve that. Okay? You can split it into two equations, and you can get two values for x, but when you plug them back in, you're not going to get negative 9. They're not going to work. Okay? So always take a split second. Uh, once you isolate that absolute value and make sure that that's actually a, a um, possible situation. Let's look at number 15. Now, I point this one out specifically because time and time again people make this mistake. They want so badly to combine the negative 5 minus 8. They want to combine those terms and put So you must begin by adding 5 to both sides. And that gives you negative 88. And then divide both sides by negative 8. So we get the absolute value of 6x plus 7 is equal to 11. We're okay now. It's equal to a positive number. Our absolute value is, is isolated, so we can now split it into two equations and solve those two equations individually to get our two solutions. Seven from both sides, <clears throat> then divide by six, so we get x is equal to two-thirds. I prefer fractions. Please do not write decimals. For the other one, 6x is equal to negative 18. Divide by 6 on both sides. x is equal to negative 3. Two solutions. It never hurts to check them. I'm not going to go through that process, but they do both give you negative 93 if you check them. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> what about the inequalities? Okay, what about the inequalities? Same premise, okay, it's just the one more added detail in there, okay? You do have to isolate the absolute value first, okay? Um, and in this case, it is isolated. So for the first equation, I'm just going to drop the absolute value bars. For the second equation, like with my... Um, excuse me, for the second inequality, like with our equations, I'm going to change the sign of the right side. But what do we do when we divide an inequality by a negative number? you got to flip the sign. you got to change the, the direction of the inequality. So first equation, we keep everything the same. We just drop the absolute value. For the other one, just change the right side. Technically, you can change the signs of what's inside the absolute value, but usually it's easier to change the signs of the, of the other side because there's usually only a single term on the other side. If you change the signs of what's inside, then you've got to change two terms. <coughs> it just opens yourself up to more error. But please do not forget to flip the inequality when you change that sign. Okay? And then you're just solving them. So we add 10, divide by 5, m is less than 7, and then we do it to the other side, 5m is greater than negative 15, divide by 5, okay. Now I don't flip the inequality here because I am dividing a negative number by a positive number. You only flip the sign when you're dividing by a negative, okay, when the number on the bottom is the negative, all right. <clears throat> now, we need to put this on the number line because these are inequalities, okay? 
So anytime there's not the equal to sign under the inequality, then you use an open circle. So we've got an open circle at negative 3. We have an open circle at 7. M is less than 7, and actually we should put the word and between these because when your absolute value is less than a number, that's an and. Okay, that's an and. Um, so that also means that we can write this as a compound inequality. We could squish the two solutions together and express it this way. You put the smallest number on the far left, the biggest number on the right, um, and just make sure that your inequality signs <clears throat> stay true. Okay? Um, and then we shade in between. Open circles because there's no equal to. It's just greater than or less than. Okay? Now, it amazes me that we, we do these problems, we do these worksheets that have the number lines already made for you. And you'll notice they're not all the same. They, they have different scales. And the reason for that is because your solution is, is supposed to fit on that number line. So if you're doing these and you get a number that's not on the number line, then it probably means that it's not the solution. Okay? And that sounds silly, but people do that. They, they, they think that their solution should go off the number line. It, it's made that way for a reason. Okay? That's one way to kind of check yourself on these. If your number does not fit on here, then it's not the right number. Okay? Now, that's not to say that you couldn't get um, 9 over 2. Okay? 9 over 2 is not explicitly on here, but 9 over 2 is equal to 4.5. 4.5 is on here. Okay? You can still get fractions and decimals. Um, it's just they should fit within that window. Okay? Let's look at number 23. Number 23 has got several things going on here. We need to isolate this like we would any other absolute value equation or inequality. Okay, we need to get it by itself, so start by adding 8 to both sides. Now, again, I will say this one more time. You cannot change what is inside the absolute value. You cannot just decide that, oh, I want to get rid of that negative, so I'm going to look at my absolute value bars like they're parentheses. Okay, they're not. They're very different from parentheses. Um, you cannot just distribute that negative in there. You need to handle that negative outside the absolute value by dividing both sides by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1. Same difference. But we multiplied or divided by a negative number, so we've got to flip the inequality. So your absolute value expression should be the absolute value of negative 6x plus 10 is greater than 40. Before we split it into 2, that's what it should look like. It can be greater than a positive number. Okay, it can be greater than a positive number. Let me go ahead and pause right here and point out something. Um, if that inequality sign had not flipped, okay, if that negative had not been in front of that absolute value, and we had the absolute value 6 plus 10 is less than negative 40, this would be a situation where there's no solution. Because your absolute value cannot equal a negative or it certainly can't be less than a negative number because the only thing less than a negative number are more negative numbers. Um, and it's certainly not going to equal that. So if that had not flipped, then we would have had no solution. But it did, so we're okay. We can proceed. Negative 6x plus 10 is greater than 40. Negative 6x plus 10 is less than negative 40. Now this one... Before we split it, this absolute value was greater than a number. That's or. Okay, that's or. That means we're going to end up shading the ends of this when we graph it on the number line once we get our solutions. Okay, so if it's less than, it's and. If it's greater than, it's or. And we'll write that down here in a minute. I've got some uh, notes for you to, to jot down to remind yourself. Okay, let's solve it. Dividing by a negative, don't forget to flip, so x is less than negative 5, 